Big Top Burger is a cartoon made by Worthy Kids, and as of the time of me writing this, its first season of five episodes has just ended. I want to talk about the show a little bit because I think it does a lot of things really, really well, and I want to figure out why that is, so let's get right into it. Also, this video will contain spoilers for the series, but there's only five episodes and they're like 12 minutes long in total, so just go watch them right now if you haven't already. Big Top Burger is an episodic cartoon that follows four clowns who run a circus-themed food truck named Big Top Burger. Penny, Billy, and Tim all work under Steve, the proprietor of the establishment. Together they sell burgers and more against their rival food truck, Zomburger. The premise of the show is very simple, but there are some key things about it that I think include us in as to why it works so well. The first thing that stuck out to me when the show came out was its setting. The entire cartoon takes place in the Big Top Burger food truck as they drive across an infinitely long freeway, making stops along the way to serve customers. The thing that's so special about this is that, aside from Big Top Burger itself, the only other cartoon that I can think of off the top of my head about a group of workers is SpongeBob SquarePants. Spongebob, as you probably know, is one of the most successful cartoons of all time. It has many similarities to Big Top Burger, but there are some differences that set it apart in a really interesting way. Now, Spongebob was never meant to be taken as a serious commentary on the plight of the working class, but it could get pessimistic at times, especially with the way that they handled Squidward's character. They walked a fine line of making him seem distraught and unhappy, while still maintaining the overall kid-friendly, jovial tone of the show. Spongebob was meant to be a foil to him in a lot of ways, a blissfully ignorant fast food worker that genuinely enjoyed his dead-end job. The relationship was really delicate, and we can see this in the way it starts to fall apart in some of the later seasons of the show. Squidward torture porn episodes, weird, creepy misinterpretations of their relationship, etc. Big Top Burger reminds me of Spongebob in a lot of ways, but Worthy Kids had an entirely different approach to the premise of a show about a group of workers. Instead of focusing the show on the job itself, Big Top Burger uses its setting and characters as more of a springboard to tell all sorts of crazy stories that I don't think you could get from something like Spongebob. As weird as it is to say this about a cartoon whose main cast is made up of talking marine life, Spongebob comes off as a lot more grounded in reality than Big Top Burger. Things start to really go off the chain in the third episode of the show, when Steve reveals to Penny that he smoked a mystical jewel pod. Fans have theorized that this jewel pod is the source of the strange happenings that seem to occur around Steve and the rest of the show. Steve, as a character, is very, very bizarre. He reminds me of Uncle Grandpa in the way that he seems almost omnipotent at certain points. His feats of strength and power throughout the show include fighting a quote jacked elk and barely making it out alive, getting hit by a cannonball and thrown out the side of his food truck's window at top speed, removing the stove from said food truck on his own, and whatever this is. A pleasure to meet you. My name's Tom. Wh what? What? Something's up with that Steve guy. I'm still not really sure what happened in episode 3, but it was very engaging. I think Steve is one of the most important characters in the show. He's really what gives it its edge, in my opinion. If it weren't for his constant antics and dubious, shady past with Caesar of the rival food truck, Zomburger, it really wouldn't be the same. Oh yeah, I mentioned that earlier, didn't I? There's a rival food truck where the workers dress up as Frankenstein monsters instead of clowns? The fourth episode of the show is my favorite one by far. It introduces Zomburger, the rival food truck to Big Top Burger. Instead of the theme of clowns and circuses that we're familiar with, Zomburger's food truck is based off of horror, monsters, Halloween, and everything spooky. If you're a fan of Worthy Kid's other work, then you'll know this type of thing is right up his alley. It also gives them a very classic, unabashed villain feeling that I really appreciate. And yes, they are the show's villains. Their evil deeds are motivated by a mysterious, long-time rivalry with Big Top Burger, if Steve's reaction to seeing them is anything to go by. At first, I saw this rivalry going one of two directions. One, Zomburger's food could have been way better than Big Top Burger's, in turn making Steve jealous of them and kicking off an underdog story type rivalry. Or two, the other way around, where Big Top Burger's food is way better, but Zomburger is persistent and constantly comes back to annoy their employees and hamper their success. 
Instead, Worthy Kids wrote a joke into their rivalry that I think is just stellar. His burgers are bad, but mine are 100% worse. We're practically selling charcoal in a bun. How is that a good thing? Yeah, uh, hold on. How is that a good thing? You fools! This is a themed restaurant. People only come here to make humorous Instagram posts about our absurd burger. It's this kind of modern, unique spin on an old trope that really makes Big Top Burger work for me. Zomburger, as an aspect of the cartoon, is taken further by the references to the cabinet of Dr. Caligari within the employees' names. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was a 1920 German silent horror film, wherein one of the main characters bears a striking resemblance to Caesar from Big Top Burger. They even share the same name. The other employees follow this naming convention. Conrad shares his name with the actor who played Caesar. Doctor's name is a reference to Dr. Caligari himself, and Francis shares their name with one of the other main characters, though it is spelt differently. In the end, they're thwarted and fly away helplessly into the sky, a la Team Rocket from the Pokemon anime. All of these references tie into another part of Big Top Burger that I want to address. The show is inextricably linked to themes of performance, showmanship, theater, and Broadway. This shows up in more subtle ways, such as the classical film references that I mentioned a minute ago, or the fact that the whole show follows a group of clowns, a profession that has always been associated with performance, but it's also more upfront at certain points. At one point, Steve has a flashback to his time playing a role in the musical Cats. The character Old Deuteronomy from Cats also makes an appearance in the lyrics to the main theme of the show, Up. All of this is fitting since Big Top Burger is, well, obviously a show, but the inclusion of all of these illusions seems to give it a sense of self-awareness that you don't see as often in cartoons. It also perfectly sets up the emotional conclusion to the season during the fifth episode, Grease Paint. In this episode, we see Penny, Tim, and Billy taking off their work uniforms of makeup and clown noses after a long and tiring day on the job. When they step outside of the truck, they're greeted by one of the customers from an earlier episode who says, Well, I thought you were all real, genuine clowns. They then explain that, Dude, clowns aren't real. And that it was just a costume. All of them are revealed to have normal human character designs underneath the clown uniform. Except for Steve, but I'm not really sure what his deal is. They all go their separate ways and the season ends, just like that. I think it was only fitting for Worthy Kids to give Big Top Burger Season 1 a send-off like this after all that he did to play it up as a show made with a love of shows in mind. The characters all take off their costumes and go home, just like actors after the end of a stage production. It leaves the viewer with a real cohesive and completed feeling of the show, almost as if to say don't cry because it's over, be happy because it happened, that I think is perfect for the type of show that he was trying to create. Steve's refusal to remove his uniform, however, gives the first season a buzzer beater bit of whimsy that really left me glad that I was able to watch the whole thing. Before I go, I want to talk about the way the show itself looks. Big Top Burger was all animated within Blender. For an indie cartoon, the look that Worthy Kids was able to achieve is really, really impressive. The show goes for a faux 2D style, using filters and outlines to make the characters look like traditional cartoons. The still backgrounds were all hand-painted, whereas the moving ones were also done with 3D models. The characters' faces and some parts of their bodies were also drawn on with 2D animation. The thing that jumped out to me the most during the show visually was the way that its graphics fell apart and artifacted at certain points. You can clearly see the road disappearing and reappearing after a given distance during certain scenes. Characters' body parts sometimes clip into each other, and short animations get looped sometimes. Not to mention the jewel pod from earlier. None of this strikes me as laziness, though. Instead, it feels like an artistic flourish from Worthy Kids to give the show its own character. It reminds me of early 3D video games like from the N64 and PlayStation era, which, at least for me, only made it feel more fun and engaging. It felt like the cartoon was trying to reserve disk space sometimes. I've never seen something quite like it in a 3D cartoon, and aside from the animation as a whole, which could at times feel glitchy and limited, the show has certain bits that still wow me when I see them every time. Here are a few of my favorites. <laughs> You're pretty strong. Oh, you want a rough house, huh? Okay. 
thank you guys so much for watching this video. All in all, I think Big Top Burger is a really, really good show, and you should definitely watch it. Let me know if you guys like this video. There are some other independent cartoons on YouTube that I'd really like to come after someday with more video essays. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing those. Thanks for watching. Until next time.